And welcome back for our final segment of Aging Well this month. With me today in the studio is uh, community social worker, Lisa Waxman. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be here. Glad to have you. And uh, protective service social worker, Nora Alwatade. Welcome back. Thank you. So happy to be back again. Yeah, you guys have been great today. This has uh, been a fun show. We're going to have to do this again sometime soon. So our final segment, we're going to take a closer look at self-neglect. And I heard that you might be interested in telling us a little bit about an example of self-neglect that you've come across in general, because mm -hmm. we strictly observe people's privacy. Mm -hmm. um, but in a general sense, you could tell us a little bit about how these things go. Sure. Well, what we see a lot in older adults is what's maybe turned into self-neglect. Maybe they've been they've been living a certain way for a very long time, but as they age and maybe their mobility has decreased, eyesight has decreased, and maybe there's a little bit more frailty, a common situation might turn into self-neglect. For example, we see all the time in, in um, homes, we see throw rugs and scatter rugs. And, you know, for the most part, they're okay, but if you are a fall risk or if you're a little uneasy on your feet, a scatter rug or a throw rug could be a big problem. So how it's self-neglect is if, you know, when, when it's addressed with an older adult that this could be a problem, people are usually um, unwilling at first to change any of their decor or they don't really want to get rid of a rug that may be serving a purpose, whether it be decorative or any other personal use um, purpose. Um, we also see um, self-neglect in some of the buildings around Somerville and Cambridge that have gone non-smoking. And it's really hard if you've been smoking for many, many years to just stop. Mm -hmm. So some folks do continue to smoke in their apartments or in unauthorized areas of the building. And unfortunately, that puts them in, um, at risk for having some legal issues with housing. So that is a form of self-neglect as well. Also, we see it um, quite often when people aren't feeling well and they're reluctant to go to the doctor or if they're reluctant to follow medical um, treatments. Uh, maybe they don't finish a full course of antibiotics, um, or they don't feel that they need a certain medication that was prescribed. Um, we, we see that quite a bit. Um, sometimes people will um, have a stack of bills that they feel overwhelmed to pay mm. um, for various reasons and um, decide that they don't want to pay a certain bill or that um, a certain company can wait, um, and that can put them at risk of maybe um, having trouble with their utilities um, or perhaps difficulty with their mortgages or their rents. Um, these may sound like very subtle things that everybody, a lot of adults tend to do, but uh, we worry as people get older, these subtle um, examples of self-neglect can be pretty consequential. Mm, absolutely. Are there some creative ways you've been able to help with some of these challenges? Yes. The good thing is um, one of the main reasons people call uh, for help um, in many of our programs is because they, they want help either cleaning their homes or they want help paying bills, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. They are opening the door for that kind of help. Um, it's, it's that executive functioning type of help that people usually ask for um, up front versus the personal care kind of help, which is harder to accept. So sometimes people... Um, they want assistance with um, organizing things in their home, paying bills, um, structuring their routine, setting appointments. Uh, people are much more open to accepting that kind of help. Mm -hmm. And um, once we develop that kind of relationship uh, with a person, we feel that we can maybe open the door to offering some suggestions for other areas of help that a person might need. Absolutely. And we're running short on time, so I just have one last question. Uh, the collaboration, both between different programs at SECS and external, and SECS is Somerville Cambridge Elder Services, and external agencies. Can you tell me a little bit about how that works? My understanding is it's a fairly collaborative environment. Yes, I always say working in Somerville and Cambridge is a great place to be a be a social worker. I've worked in three other states and um, the resources we have in these two communities are wonderful as well as the collaborative professional relationships are great. We work with um, we work with two great hospital systems. Mm -hmm. We have councils on aging in both Somerville and in the Cambridge area. Um, we have we have long-standing relationships with the professionals there. Um, and other 
I think in protective services, we collaborate a lot with medical providers, so the two um, big medical providers, mm -hmm. two big hospitals. Um, and we also collaborate a lot internally within the agency. Um, with the Connect program, we make so many referrals. We rely on that program, and it's been an incredible asset to our elder, the elders that protective mm -hmm. services um, works with because um, they can be involved long term. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely true. We're also, we also have really great collaborative relationships with the housing authorities and the housing managers because a great number of our, of our clients do live in elder housing. So um, they have resident services coordinators in a lot of the buildings and it's just a great joy to be able to work with professionals who are there in the building. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure they have some great perspective they're able to share. And one thing before we go, uh, protective services. I know that you can be contacted there during the week. You also have a 24-hour hotline. Yep. During the week, you can always call just the agency and ask for protective services. Um, after hours, actually anytime, I think you can call this number. It's the 24-hour um, elder abuse hotline. It's 1-800-922-2275. And during regular business hours, you can always call our Aging Information Center at 617-628-2601. Uh, my basic way of explaining it is if you have any questions about aging, just give them a call, and they're usually pretty good about finding what's out there for you. Yes. So they're great at that. It's a, it's a no wrong door phone number, so please call. That's really excellent. Yeah. Uh, Nora, Lisa, I want to thank you again. You've been a great guest. We're definitely going to have to do this again sometime. And uh, that's all for this month for Aging Well. We'll see you next time. Thanks again. Bye-bye.